Okay, take 20. Welcome town meeting members. My name is Artie Crocker. I'm a fellow town meeting member and a member of the Community Preservation Committee. The purpose of my presentation is to provide with you an overview of Article 14 to appropriate the sum of $101,500 of Community Preservation Act funds for the design of new skins at the softball diamonds and Claxton Field, as well as a design to replace the existing lighting poles and lights. When reviewing the eligibility of this project for funding, the CPC determined that the Community Preservation Act specifically allows for this open space recreation project. As mentioned in the town meeting warrant, or as worded, the funds would be spent under the direction of the town manager, and to meet this appropriation, that said fund to be raised from the Community Preservation Fund receipts. What I'll do right now is I'm gonna share my screen. I won't be able to share it full screen because apparently it wasn't working correctly in my test, is, my test. so I'll share it and I'll share it kind of regular, regular screen size, and hopefully that'll shed a little bit more light on what the project is about. So give me one second, please, and I will share it with you. Again, forgive me, I'll be with you in one second. Okay, here we are. So I believe you can, oops, no, no, sorry. I lost full screen mode. We are, there we are in full screen mode <laughs> and it's shared. Okay, so there we are. Hopefully you can see that, <laughs> you can see that. So again, this is, the, uh, this is for the engineering design funding request for field site improvements specifically for the infields at the two different playing fields at Claxton Field. There's Claxton one to the left playing field and there's Claxton two to the right. And as well as some light, lighting, much needed lighting upgrades to the fields as well. So we're, well, Claxton Field, but perhaps some of you don't know that Claxton Field is opposite the Needham Recycling Transfer Station. Matter of fact, Claxton Field is actually over the old town, Needham Town Dump. And I've been in town for 61 years or so, and I never remember seeing it. So it, it's, it hasn't been a dump for a long time, which means it's been Claxton Field for a long time. So when, well, the when is now. And the reason, the reason being is, I mean, we need, we need an engineer and design site improvements and upgrades. We just need them. The goal of seeking this construction, then the goal is to seek the construction funds the following year. So why? Well, my, I know my own personal why. I played in these fields 40, years, 40 or so years ago, and they were probably better then, maybe not a lot better, but they were probably better then. And I don't think these fields have been touched much in 40 years, except for maybe a little bit of lighting changes through time. So again, it's been many years since these fields have had any significant field site improvements. And Claxton Field represents one of the largest open spaced athletic field in fact, complexes in town. So who benefits? It would be the high school varsity and junior varsity girls softball programs. Excuse me. Additional user groups would be at Claxton would include junior football, Needham Soccer Club, youth softball, Needham Baseball, softball, excuse me, and Needham Softball with co-ed and, men, co and men programs as well. And certainly as well as young families using the playground and picnic areas. So why now? Well, to restate it, this is over an old landfill. A lot of things happen with stuff over old landfills. I mean, things, you know, ground shift around a lot. So we need to excavate the, the infields of both playing fields and rebuild the surfaces. And, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, do a little test holes, maybe going down about a foot, and then we'll rebuild that surface from, from about foot, a foot up to match the existing outfield. So what we need to do is we need to eliminate the the lip between the infield and outfield, because that's a big safety hazard. So again, we're gonna have proper grading, the field elevations to prevent trips and falls, and again, tie in the skins, the infield skin with the outfield surface. There'll also be some accoutrements to this, some player, field player accoutrements, some, some dugouts or, or, or benches with some shading. Uh, there'll be some fencing, although the fencing will likely occur on the, on, only on the right-hand field is that we can't have it on the, on the left-hand field because the outfield, the left hand, the outfield on the left-hand field excuse me, is actually used for junior football and soccer, soccer um, programs as well. And there'll be much needed lighting upgrades as well. So again, to restate it, this will be removing the existing material from the infield and rebuilding from the ground up, making sure that the elevations and field grading tie into the site. Uh, not minor to this project is lighting. And there's essentially about three components to the lighting going on here. One is we need to change the locations of the lighting poles, and we need to, we need to light both fields. And in, and in doing so, we're gonna be using very efficient LED lightings 
And this will also give us the ability of changing the locating, locations of the lighting poles to make it safer for all the fields, all the players. And that lighting will be matched to the fields. But very, uh, then two other very important components to this is, so the lighting will be very efficient LED lighting, which will be much cheaper for the town to operate. But also this lighting is gonna be remotely controllable. As it stands right now, the lighting is in essentially an on-off switch or a couple of on-off switches in, inside the building at Claxton Field. It means you have to go on site, turn it on, you have to be on site, turn it off. That is not, I use the word convenient. I, I hate using that word convenient, but the reality is it doesn't, it doesn't allow these fields to be as, as played, on, played on as often as they could be. With a remote, with a remote control access, these, these lights could be turned on and off uh, much easier and allow for much more playing time. And, and, and with that, will be lighting, which is much less too ex expensive to operate. And so there are a lot of benefits for the town of not only fixing the tripping hazards on these fields, and there, there are great tripping hazards between infield and outfield, but also spend an awful lot less money to lighting these fields. These are just a few other pictures of the fields. We're talking, you know, you can see in one of the old lighting poles here, which I think is actually still being used, um, one lighting pole or a couple of tall lighting poles even that were added a number, you know, quite a number of years ago at this point. And those lighting poles will all be replaced, be relocated with very modern, very inexpensive to operate LED lighting and also controllable from remotely. And as mentioned, there will be some accoutrements. We're talking spillator benches at both diamonds. Some no more areas is what we're looking at. Some warning tracks, uh, some potentially scoreboards, the need for some additional landscaping. Certainly shade structures will, will be of some benefit. And fencing, the fencing would be on the right-hand field. As mentioned, I believe I'm repeating myself now. That's okay. In the right-hand field, um, and, they, and they can't be on the left-hand field because that would put the fencing in the outfield which is shared by football and soccer programs. And with that, excuse me, and with that, I will say thank you very much. In conclusion, the Meeting Community Preservation Committee unanimously recommends the adoption of Article 14 to the appropriation of some $101,500 from the Community Preservation Act funds for the purpose of design of the skins and lighting at Claxton Field. Be well and see everyone at town meeting, and thank you very much for joining me. Take care.